Good morning my friends, welcome back, it's Belinda here. I have in front of me one of the latest kits, maybe the latest kit, I've kind of, it's all becoming blurred in my head already and we're only in February. Anyway, a new kit from Rachel and Bella Crafts, I believe it's been out a couple of weeks now, I'm a bit late getting to it but ne better late than never. So first I want to do a flip through of this kit. I am going to be using this in today's project. It is so, so pretty. It's all in neutrals, which is just fabulous because it's going to lend itself to so many different projects. It's called the Grunge Essentials Collection. So you can expect some grunge, vintage, shabby, gorgeousness in this very neutral palette of sort of creamy to yellow, beige, brown, there's a little hint of pinks in there, there's a little hint of blue, but it's just gorgeous. So let's have a look. It's 12 pages, I believe. So this is the cover page, which is not counted as one of the 12, uh, but I printed it out because it, it makes good collage bits as well. So it's got gold in here as well, that sort of plays to the yellow side. It's got text, it's got hearts, it's got lace everywhere, like just gorgeous little bits of handwriting. Um, it's just stunning. Beautiful, beautiful papers to work with practically anything. But if you're into grunge, if you're into vintage, into shabby chic, or just looking for something neutral to put in the background um, or make pages that are writable on then you're going to love this and a lot of like gemstones faux gems appear in this which is fantastic some florals there's a little hint of blue here just very soft and subtle but just like isn't it gorgeous like and so different to anything else I've actually got in my collection of digitals. I think these are going to be so usable. I love this kind of layered paper kind of background that it's got. Some butterflies, moths, that type of thing in there as well. Some more bits of gold. This lovely big butterfly with the little jewellery pieces. A little bit of bling. And this lovely distressed looking lace that's all beautifully grungy. You know, if you're looking for your, your classic clean lace, pretty. This is pretty, but it's also grungy. Um, yeah, it's just so yummy. Lots of leaves, lots of hearts. Just stunning. Bits of gold throughout. So quite ornate in feel as well which is an interesting combination, ornate with grunge. I think that's quite an interesting point of difference. This beautiful lace. The birdcage there with a floral spray. And there's a, like a little moth or butterfly up here. This frame with, again, with just that subtle hint of blue. And a little sort of grayy blue over the side as well. And then just lace and this lovely big flourish across the bottom. So yes, definitely ornate. I think ornate does fit as a description. Some more butterflies. Whoops. Yeah, I'm threatened to slide off the back of my desk there. A uh, little more hints of blue here. And then some of those, we'll just call them diamonds. Gems gems whatever it's probably easier just to call them diamonds um, more lace another heart where the center has been removed so it's just like the outside of the heart with the lace here's we've got some pink roses just very subtle pink very delicate pastel and all this beautiful text love the text another beautiful bird cage here um, some of these diamonds actually have like a little blue tinge to them um, a frame here with diamonds around it and some lace. Super pretty. And there's some like hessian or something in the background texture, which is cool. And some pale creamy yellow roses here. Some patches of gold. 
uh, beautiful layers, beautiful grunge, beautiful distressing on it all. So that is the Grunge Essentials Collection. So I'm going to be using this, as I said, for my project. So I'm going to take out this page, because I'm not using that today. And I want something that is fairly writable, or not too busy. So I'm going to pick one out, um, and it's probably just going to be a portion of one that I use. This one is, I think, speaking to me. Or I could do this side. I might grab that one out as well. I think those two are probably what I'm after. So I'll just have a quick little flick through just to double check. Yeah, I think that this front one too would be a good choice. Um, so I'll leave it at the front in case I need extra. So I'm looking for the like this part and like this part up here and maybe even down into these roses because they're not super busy. They're very neutral as well. Um, so let me trim off the white and then we'll get into the project. So I might just trim this bit in half because I won't be using the side with the heart on it. So I might as well just chop it in half now. And that can make a cool big journal card or tip-in or something this side. Because I've chopped it in half I can now use my guillotine to chop the top and bottom white off. Not sure how many will get made today of the project. Um, or just I haven't made a prototype, so <laughs> we're kind of just going to be making along together. And I will get to what we're making very, very shortly. All right, so I'm probably. Um, go. I might just go on this side of the butterfly that's down the bottom and if I need some extra I've got that piece I can go and cut some more off so just just doing some prep work so how's your week been my friends have you had a good week so far mine so far has not been too bad. This is Monday as I'm recording. Um, so I'm not very far into my week. Not a lot to go on yet to, to report about. Um, I do have a doctor's appointment. Oh, not a doctor's appointment, sorry. What am I talking about? A An appointment at the medical centre this afternoon to go have my blood drawn. <sighs> Not excited at all about it, but has, has to happen, so that's this afternoon. Okay, so for this project, I am using a soup box as my base. Just any light, lightish cardstock. This isn't super heavy. It's, you know, if you can see by the flex, it's not super heavy, but it is nice and sturdy. So I am going to put that down on top. On the pattern side. Just let me grab a glue page and I think I'll do both glue stick and tacky glue I think. I'm gonna be careful that I don't gouge up my glue stick on this on the edge of the card because that would be that would take a big chunk if I caught it the wrong way on the edge of the cardboard that and we'll put some tacky glue added insurance oh it must be slightly blocked because I'm getting just the narrowest little line of glue out so I'm not going to bother stopping to fix it because at least I'm getting glue out it will be fine that will do I 
might as well put it over so I'm, my scraps are usable. Leftovers. So I'm just going with the front and the back of the box. Um, I also have the spine that wasn't, you know how when they do a box, one's, one of the spines has got the two layers glued together where it folds around to close up. So I've thrown the one that had that gluey, you know, here where it's been glued together. Throwing that bit away because it's all lumpy and stuff. But I've kept this one. Um, I might do something with that. We'll see. I'm intrigued by the shape and the size. And it kind of plays into my inspiration for this project as well. Which I did have it here to show you, but um, I don't know where it's gone. Yeah, yes, I was going to show you my inspiration. Um, so there's a whole lot of books at church being given away by a lady who's gone into a rest home. And I have this thing about books. I love them to bits. I, you know, and especially if they're free, I can't not grab books. And as I was looking through them, I came across something. I'm going to go this way with this one. Um, that was it was wasn't a personal item it was just a, a bit of shrapnel that had been tucked in there and so i grabbed the bit of shrapnel which happened to be an airline luggage label you know the the kind and it was about this size actually probably pretty close to being that size um that you write your name and address and things on and then you attach it to your luggage for when you're traveling by plane and i i I've been sitting here for days. I've had it for a couple of weeks and just looking at it and appreciating it and turning it over and it's got a few fold lines and a, a tag hole and a bit of elastic and you know and I've just been thinking about what I could how I could use it or um, and finally I came up with an idea and it's kind of springboarded from that so it's not kind of exactly like the one that I found in the book but it's in definitely inspired by it All right so I'm just trimming this card isn't actually square or anything I've just trimmed it out of the box so it's not straight but I'm just cutting down the paper so I can see where I'm working to and this box has this lovely sort of creamy color interior which I thought was really lovely it is a little bit damaged here where the inside tore, but we can deal with that. We can just, you know, we're junk journalists, so a little tear on the cardboard is not really a big deal. It's just part of the aesthetic. We can embrace it, or we can remove it if it really bugs us, if it's too bad, or we can cover it over if it's in a critical area that we don't really want to lose. So don't be worried about a little bit of damage. So I think these papers are going to make a really nice neutral but interesting beginning to these. What we're making are faux luggage tags. That's my idea. So wouldn't they be great just as journal cards, just like that? Super pretty, just like distress around them, do focal point and voila you've got a couple of journal cards but we're not making journal cards today so i am going to do some stamping i should have grabbed out my stuff but i didn't so i'll close my glue up for the moment because we don't need that now right pull the sleeves up let's get to work i oh, sip of my tea it's half gone and getting colder as we speak so i've got these really this cheap set unbranded set of labels um i don't have anything that says like a luggage label like name address telephone number i don't have anything like that so i'm just going to use these labels it doesn't matter what they say and i am going to stamp on this plain cardboard side so not on the side that we just put the paper on you're going to do it on the back side. 
so this is going to be writable um, so I'm just looking at which stamp these have little sayings on them as well and they were made in China let's face it they've got spelling mistakes like this says may you live every day of your life well yeah what else are you going to do with every day of your life if you're not living because then you're not then it's not life like it doesn't make sense but most of the y's are actually t's and there's only one y the y in your that is an actual y the rest of them are t's so oh well whatever um i'm still i still use it like i'm not going to stop using it because of stupid little spelling error in the chinese factory some stamps that i get that have spelling errors errors in them definitely do not use because it's just like glaring but this is a tiny little line at the top um it you can actually it makes sense kind of kind of but doesn't <laughs> you know i can live with this one some of them i don't live with some of them it's like no nah, that's i've got a sheet of birthday ones birthday sentiments that came from china and there's the quotes for birthdays and they're so full of errors there's only like half of them i can actually use the other half i just just like i can't abide by that level of inanity and is that a word inane i want to say an inane inaneness <laughs> here i am going on about spelling errors and i <laughs> my english has gone out the window so i'm going to stamp this um and hopefully it stamps okay and I'm going to leave a space at the end because we need to turn it into a tag. So just. And if this isn't perfectly square and straight, I'm not actually worried about that either because um, we, we're going to be chopping this up. I think I can probably get three of these from one, from one card. So, you know, it's just lines for writing. I don't care about the, the misspelling on this one. Um, actually, could we get... If I did it here, then we might have a strip down there that we could turn into something as well. Or maybe not, but we'll see. Might, might be too thin down the side, but it might make a little page decoration or a little mini belly band across the, a tag or something. So, and do one this way. Just thinking about whether I place it differently or not, but I think we'll just go similar kind of space at the, the front end. So using a, a non-directional paper is very useful for this, and that's partly why I chose the areas that I did, because there's no real direction to it okay so done three of those and I'll do something else for the other one oops my wet wipe's gone I just kind of stamp it off on my glue page here a little bit no it's not really clean enough for me but I'll do that afterwards don't need to take care of that so let's grab a different stamp so we're not doing all the same one. So there's one here with a border. It says memo and then it's got courage is grace under pressure. Wait. Ernest Hemingway. But it's Ernest spelt with a B instead of an E at the end. So it's Burnest. <laughs> Just crazy. Just crazy. Crazy. Lack of attention to detail or something. I mean I know their first language is not English but Surely there's somebody checking these things. I guess they don't pay people to do that. Right, so this is going to be a narrower one. I'm just going to... This has um, just got date and title on it and lines. So no spelling mistakes on this one. Kind of trying to keep an even border around the sides. 
yep happy with that one and i think i'll just do so get quite a few of these i think maybe four gosh that wind's picked up outside it's actually not a cold day um, but I'm feeling cold because it's overcast like there's a cloud and so the sun's not getting through and while it was quite warm or bearable this morning inside it kind of got a bit cool and so I've put my hoodie on because I was feeling feeling just a little on the coolish side and I was like no I need another layer Yeah, that wind's picked up for sure. Right, let's just get that quick bit of ink there. That was quite loud. Did you hear the truck toot? I certainly did. I don't know if you would have. Right. So, let's grab my guillotine. And maybe I do this one because these will be dry, a bit drier. this one first hopefully my guillotine goes okay through this card it should be fine yep and chomp it's a very decisive chomp that one's not straight so maybe we want to straighten that up a little bit first okay yeah we could probably turn that into a little mini belly band or something Oh, I'm getting some ink under my guard here. So obviously the ink's not quite dry yet. So I'm just going to snip off this end part here. And those bits, mm, I'm going to throw away. going to be daring and throw them away. Oh, I've got a bit of ink smeared on there. That's all right. We'll just distress them up and disguise it. Right. So I've got those three. And is this now dry enough? Hope so. crunch that's quite a quite a crunch isn't it oh but I do love my guillotine it makes life so much easier right now I've got a little strip here so I want to yep it's still transferring ink onto my plastic guard I'm gonna have to give that a clean so throw that bit away Um, that could do with a little trim. That one's okay. And this one could do with a wee trim. So, guys, remind me to clean my guillotine, the guard. So I don't want that ink to transfer to everything else that I cut in the future. Don't need black inky smears on everything. Maybe I should go in and just give it a little. I really need a wet wipe, but this will help. There we go. That'll do for now. I'm surprised the ink wasn't dry, but anyway. Get that in the big jobs. Okay, so we have two different styles here. Two different, slightly different shapes and sizes. 
So I think on these ones, I'm going to go ahead and snip the corners because we've got this um, angled frame. Just on this bottom edge, I'm going to give it that same shape. Like so. Get rid of my shrapnel there. I'm going to ink around them. control on everything that's around my desk now do I want to give those any shape hmm maybe I do I'm just gonna eyeball it and that's actually going to take care of our black mark that we had there I'm just trying to eyeball the similar angle the ones, the one that I found in the book didn't have a shaped top, but it doesn't matter. You can make it up. There's all sorts of sizes and shapes of luggage tags, depending whether it's a bus company or a hotel or an airline, which airline it is. You know, so there's a lot of leeway there to just have fun with the, the idea and make them according to what you want. You could even make round ones if you wanted or hexagonal or octagonal you know just fun take the idea wherever you would like so let's just ink these and I'm going to ink this side as well so we are going to do something on this paper side I won't do all the inking on camera because um, I think you know everybody knows how to ink and if you don't, well, you don't need to watch it a hundred times. A couple of times is sufficient, I think. So I will do most of the inking off screen. Um, just so you don't get bored. And so that I'm not taking up all the time with something that is... Oh, that ink is definitely not dry. I'm smudging it. So maybe that's a good reason to stop inking now. <laughs> before I make it a complete nut of mess. Right, this is a new purchase that I've uh, made that I, my friend Laurel, she saw them in a second hand shop and asked, there was a whole bunch of things and asked if there was anything in the photo that I would like. And I saw this one and I think it's perfect for a project I have in mind, but it's like, what else can I use it for besides that specific project? And I think, you know, you could use your, your normal hole punch here. Um, but I think it would also be cute on these. There's a little slot punch from, this is a Stampin' Up! one. I didn't centre it, but that's okay. <laughs> and try and do a better job on the centering. Maybe I should have done it before I cut the corners. I don't even know if I'm getting it straight across. That was better. That was definitely better. Um, but I just think this would be cute. Cute little detail. So if you happen to have one of these in your stash. And you haven't used it very much. Time to grab it out. And have a little play. I Because I think that gives it quite an authentic sort of um, luggage tag look and feel. And then. Just going to go in because I obviously can't use a whole reinforcer, um, but it is cardstock, so it should be fine enough. And just give it a little dirty up on there, a little dirty up, a little grungy, you know. Um, so I'm going to do the same on these. Do I want to shorten that or do I want to leave it long? I'm going to leave it long. I can always cut it down later if I decide I'm not liking it. Probably needed to do that one in a bit further. Oops, pop. 
pop goes the weasel or pop goes the bit of cardstock into my lap and down onto the floor where I'll pick it up later here we go I didn't do too bad getting them straight not perfect but they're pretty darn good because I didn't have the end of the card right into the right up to the the thing of the punch right again let's clear the shrapnel hey snuggle bugs it's a bit windy outside is it darling snuggles our, one of our cats oh what have I got smeared on there now well that was a bit unfortunate something dirty that I just smeared there okay so that's that side I'm just wondering do I want to add anything I definitely want to add something here to cover that smudge of whatever that is because um, it doesn't look particularly pretty um, a little maybe a little stamped image or something or maybe even another stamp you could put like a you could put a an inky blotch they'd cover it over um, let's see what else we've got um, I do have like there's some coffee rings and things um, just looking for inspiration that might go with the travel kind of theme those are more gardening those ones I haven't actually used, I've given a few tests of these, but yeah, the ones I've tested don't stamp very well. I found them very cheap, and I thought I'd give them a whirl, but yeah, most of them, I'm just going to throw them on the floor for now, because I don't think they're going to do what I want to do. So, deal with me while I just find something, particularly for this one, that will work. Um, that's probably a bit big. How about we go with this round one? It says received, but does it matter? Kind of looks like a postage stamp. Um, pick up the right way. Yep, I'm just going to pop that one there. Cover that mess of whatever it was. Something random on my desk. Yeah. I mean, does received make sense on the luggage tag? Not at all. Does it matter? No. So I'm going to put that one up. And I love that that didn't stamp properly. I absolutely love that. It gives a very much more distressed look. And same with that one. And go down the bottom with this one. Love it. I think imperfect stamping works perfectly with this kind of grungy aesthetic. Okay, and I was thinking about maybe a number or something um, maybe this wee one does it say form LA434 whatever that means doesn't matter nope no actually I don't it's not the right shape and it's got a border around it and we've got everything with borders so I just need a number I think just a number by itself um, I need to move these ones out the way because they're not what I'm working on right now yeah that's it do we want to do it in a different colour let's do it in vintage photo You know how sometimes things have the number printed in a different colour? 
you do maybe yeah cool now that one we did right in the middle to cover that so maybe we just leave that one without a number and these I'm just going to use the same number um, just to so I'm not taking so much time sort of choosing and fluffing around there we go because most things have some sort of identification on them so you can it says date and title but you know date of travel name dress or just journaling little journaling note on what's going on in that person's life um just gonna grab a tissue and just kind of blot because I don't want to smudge anything and it seems like this cardboard is not absorbing the ink yeah see it's um not absorbing like I thought it would and I'm actually smudging that as I do it so let's just set those ones aside to dry while we concentrate on these ones hopefully Yeah, they're still not dry, and that's with my VersaFine. So there must be some sort of coating on these boxes that's not allowing the ink to, to soak in. Just... Okay, we're just going to run with it. A little bit of smudging here and there. It's a grungy aesthetic. Let's just celebrate that and not worry about it right so two of them are distressed on the back and one of them's distressed on the front so i will be distressing the rest so these then face this way for the front so i have this destination stamp here let's put our number back in there so we finish with that number although we could put the number on the front as well Although that's on that one, so we could always change our number. Okay, put it back for now. Let's grab our destination stamp. Do I want destination? My idea was to make up the name of a company. Oh, here it is. I found it. So here's my inspiration. It was on my desk after all. So this is the luggage tag that started this idea. So on the back it's got name, address, city, state, country, telephone number and a little sticky thing. So you fold it up to stick it together and then you attach it to your luggage. So that's my, where my idea sort of originated. <coughs> Excuse me. So I thought, obviously this one has like the name of the airway, Qantas, which is Australia. That's the name of their national airline. Um, my favourite one to fly on actually, that I've been on. So this, I'm just gathering my thoughts. Sorry if this is coming out a bit jumbled. Airways have... Every airway around the world has a two-letter code. Um, so New Zealand Air, Air New Zealand is NZ. I mean, that's pretty much. Um, so in America, for example, in America there's numerous different airlines and each one has a two-letter code that's unique to them. So I thought, why not make up our own two-letter code? Or we could make up the name and do a whole name. Um, I might actually do that just because I feel like it. So let's, I mean, you could make them all different. They don't all need to be the same either. You could just really have fun. Depends how much time you want to take. So I'm going to grab out, oh, if I can get it out. I haven't used the K. There's lots of these stamps I haven't actually used in this set. So I'm separating out the K because it's still attached to its neighbours. And I'm going to make it actually a 
this one I'm going to make a bus ticket. Why? Because I can fit everything on. <laughs> That's the sole reason. Because I can fit the text on that I want to put on. So I'm going to use the K and the I. So those of you here in New Zealand probably already guessed what I'm going to stamp out. Um, some others around the world may guess as well, but if you're not sure, here in New Zealand we often reserve, reserve, what am I talking? We often refer to ourselves as Kiwis. Kiwi is a native bird, a native bird here. Uh, an icon that's well known uh, outside of New Zealand as well as being a New Zealand bird but oh that didn't stick to my block um, but you may not know that we often refer, refer to ourselves as Kiwis um, around the world wherever we're traveling it's like oh there's another Kiwi um, and that's another New Zealander so it's also used a lot in businesses and just a means of identifying and stuff. So I'm going to call my little fictional bus company Kiwi Bus. Just because it's fun. <laughs> no rhyme reason other than that little story I just told you. Um, so it's going to be Kiwi Bus. Gonna have to clean everything after the fact. Uh, you I'm not gonna take time to do that on camera. And apart from the edge of the block where I get it dirty, because I don't want to make too many dirty marks that we don't don't need. And yes. I didn't quite centre it properly, but it's good enough. So there we go. We have Kiwi Bus luggage tag. And then could use elastic. I'm just going to use a bit of string. And I'm not actually going to tie it on um, yet. I will tie it on. I just need to ink around it first. So you can see the finished. Yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to ink around them all, and I'm not. But I realised I need to ink it before I put the string on, just to make it easier for me, for myself. And trying not to smudge that ink, although it should be okay on the paper, I hope. It should be a little bit more absorbent than the cardstock. And this way you can see one that's completely kind of finished with the distressing. I'm being so careful how I handle it because of that ink not drying. I did not anticipate that being an issue on the card. I thought the card would absorb it fine. And I'm sure it will give it, you know, a little bit of time to sit and do its thing and a generous little bit of string because you know it's ostensibly to tie around a handle on a suitcase or a bag or something so you need it sort of a decent length and I'm just going to give it a knot and there we've got our little faux luggage tag just a fun little bit of ephemera that's completely unique to you to pop into your journal so let's do another. Let's do something else. So we'll put our Kiwi bus aside over there somewhere. Um, let's go with the destination stamp. Let's stamp that on. I'm not sure what I'm going to put with it. Where's my block gone? Oh, it's still got the S on. There we go. Let's go with destination. Maybe I'll put it on this one that's inked around. I might put 
put it up the top destination and we could make up a destination too um, and you could tailor that to the theme of your journal um, have I got any ideas right now I did want to also put something travel related I've got this little airline kind of stamp here it's got a little plane and some squiggles sort of I think more it's more like an airmail maybe sort of symbol but like this one this authentic one has a, the symbol of the airline is like well we could put a little something I might put it in the middle actually and then we can have a line underneath for the destination there we go and if you've got a line stamp that you could stamp go ahead I don't so I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm just going to rule a line I might need that down a little bit I'm just going to line it up on my mat so I, the line is kind of straight hopefully And I'm going to do a dashed line. Could rule just a straight line. Oops, there's my doorbell. I'm going to have to go answer the door. Please excuse me for a moment. I'm back. Sorry about that. Just a little uh, work going on in the house. So while I've been seeing to that I just kept working and I am running out of time because I've got to leave for my uh, my medical appointment so I thought I'd just bring you back show you what I've done I've got one left to finish up so I did this one that's where we left off uh, when the doorbell rang so there's that one I didn't do anything else to this one this one I added a stamp of a ship and this receipt number here and then on the back I just used my individual number stamps and stamped the same number in that gap there and I quite like that effect so it's like a little um, cruise luggage tag then these ones I just used the destination stamp again and then I used my letter stamps to stamp out a place I've also added in in coffee ink some compasses just in the background to add a little bit of extra detail I have inked around all of these and I've added the string um, there is smudging where the ink hasn't dry but I think it just lends itself to the kind of distressed look so this one's Christchurch New Zealand and so each of these ones these long ones have the compass stamped in the background and we've got this one for Paris and this one I don't know where this one's going to be for yet um, I will make something up maybe I'll leave it until I know which journal I want to put it in and maybe it might be like a, a make-believe place or something fun like uh, destination paradise or I don't know destination funsville <laughs> I don't know it could be anything it could be whatever your heart desires definitely capable of being themed to whatever journal you're making uh, or whatever you feel in the mood for so this is my wee idea for today using these beautiful papers from Rach and Bella Crafts the name of the kit again is the grunge let me look at it I was like I yeah I know the name of a kit and then I doubted myself so let's go back to the actual cover sheet so we get it correct uh, the grunge essentials collection beautiful beautiful papers and I think they look awesome on these faux luggage tags just a fun bit of ephemera guys nothing complicated nothing terribly hard just fun grab out your stamps whatever stamp you've got and just create yourself some fun unique little faux luggage tags to pop in your journals I hope you're inspired by this idea I hope you give it a go uh, take care everybody and I'll be back tomorrow with the next video until then bye for now